current trajectory is murky at best. The organization faces significant competition in pretty much every vertical it exists in or enters. The former CEO burned a lot of bridges with local municipalities, which are entities that Uber really needs to cooperate with for long-term survival. And investors are losing faith, which makes acquiring new funding sources increasingly tricky. This puts increasing pressure on the company to financialize instead of innovate. Now here we can observe Uber's death spiral in, in really real time. Their financial bind puts the organization in a no-win scenario. Uber understands that their biggest threat is not Lyft or other you know, competitive companies, but automated vehicle technologies that are already being implemented. If Uber is unable to monopolize or integrate itself into this new vertical quickly, there's no hope for the organization. Now with all its flaws and challenges, we like Uber, I like Uber. More importantly, Uber's predicament isn't unique. It's an advanced technology that provides real value, but can never reach its full potential under a for-profit model. It's time for the United States to embrace a more progressive economic model, one that recognizes that certain technologies have advantages that cannot be measured by capital alone. If we developed a new socialized corporate structure for Uber, society would benefit. Now, Uber's initial bet was that they would dominate the market based on six key factors, which were a low asset approach, cash to overwhelm competition, technological superiority, weakness of municipal governments, expanding product lines, and then using their existing success to transition into autonomous vehicles. But to date, they've failed to realize five of those six advantages, and the transition to autonomous vehicles doesn't look likely either. Companies like Uber rely on a concept called network advantage to monopolize markets. So if you're the first organization to collect a significant majority of users within your vertical, it's going to be especially difficult for competitors to threaten you. What Uber missed is that it takes little effort for a driver to participate both in their services and competitive services like Lyft. Uber has faced the same challenge in every international market it's expanded to, and this theme also applies to all the organization's product line expansions, like uh, the Uber Eats, for example, all of which have been met with nearly identical service competitors. When we think of traditional unicorn companies, that is a startup that reaches a billion dollar valuation, we traditionally assume the ability to scale growth rapidly. Now everyone assumed Uber was a scalable model due to its low asset holdings, but in hindsight we understand that that's not really true. Uber's ability to grow is bound to the number of rides it can provide during a given point in time and space. And to illustrate this point, consider taking an Uber in Manhattan during rush hour. Um, anyone who's familiar with the city will tell you that taking the subway or even walking is going to be a much faster route. To put it another way, in the times and areas where people need Uber the most, the network is performing at its worst for the company. An aggressive approach to customer acquisition fueled Uber's rise to dominance in the rideshare market. To expand, the company entered markets with like, no concern of how it might impact local municipalities' public transit options, and the results were measurable declines in publicly funded mass transportation usage. As we would imagine, these actions have sour relationships with what should be key stakeholders in Uber's future growth trajectory. Beyond purely market-based challenges, Uber is working against our shared global effort to combat the climate crisis. While it has the potential to reduce car ownership in the long term, the short term ensures that we will have plenty of polluting vehicles on the road. As Uber encourages convenience, people will use mass transit less. And Uber drivers may also contribute to a delay in publicly owned, fully electric and automated transportation fleets because of the convenience and habit for Uber customers. Uber has no real long-term future, and the technology could be a vital component in an emergent leap for transportation here in the United States. Today, Uber exists as a transitory technology between the monolithic taxi structure that it replaced, but below the networked, automated, publicly owned electric vehicle fleet. The alternative option is for the company to continue along its current trajectory, which is essentially bleeding cash, and struggling to find a future for them that makes sense uh, for you know, their investors and their customers. So what would the process of socializing Uber look like? Well, our first steps would be to gain democratic consensus here in the United States. The progressive argument for socializing Uber is that because transportation is so vital to all of our existence, 
we should democratically choose to classify it as a right and socialize the advancement of it. It is the quickest pathway to completely renewable transportation infrastructure, it creates stable employment for both drivers and corporate employees, and has the potential to reshape our access to one another. Because we intend to facilitate the transition democratically, we want to have participation from the majority of stakeholders. Vital to this process is a clear and tangible trajectory for what we would do with the Uber network and technology after the acquisition and how we would do it. We provide citizens with high quality information explaining what the risks and benefits of the investment would be, supplied in a variety of formats to ensure that people can access the data in a method that resonates with them. Ideally, the process bans special interests and lobbying advertisements in favor of publicized debates about the subject and real discussions, not you know, major news network highlight reels like we see in the presidential elections. Socializing an organization like Uber would require much of the existing operation to stay in place, so the majority of employees would remain in place upon the initial transition. One significant change would be replacing many of the board of directors opting instead for an elected rotating citizen oversight committee to ensure the public's voice in the growth planning. We ban political actors from participating in the board, codifying protections against the politicization of the investment for both present and future leaders. Before the vote, some purchase agreement would have to be negotiated. The public's choice to socialize the industry isn't a commitment to give investors a high return on their investments. That, that's not our issue. Ideally, a happy medium may be reached based on the existing and projected value of the organization. Uber struggles with finding a relevant pathway forward that makes it a sustainable business model, making it an attractive acquisition for the people of the United States. Upon transfer, Uber could immediately implement policies to solve one of its most pressing issues, driver dissatisfaction. At present, about 78% of total booking revenues are paid out to the drivers. But that rate could be immediately increased to about 85% depending on the long-term plan to utilize the technology. We could also reduce ride costs by cutting overhead costs such as marketing and advertising, and by doing so, we create a more impactful draw to the publicly owned network through price points. Essentially, right, the, the, the publicly owned Uber network would be cheaper than the four private owned networks uh, that it would compete with. Capital earned over operational costs could be focused on research and development to advance the network technologies in many different directions. In times of high surplus, the public could vote to designate some of the capital to alternative social projects. In essence, socializing Uber would make every citizen of the United States a stakeholder in the vertical of transportation. Uber's technology can also be integrated into automated electric vehicle transport systems in local and state governments. Through the power of the state, the public monopolizes transportation, ensuring continuous investment and a high degree of transparency and benefits that impact entire communities. Now, tying this nationalized transportation network into our climate goals, we can grant immediate priority treatment to electric vehicle drivers. Now, critics of that statement may argue that the cost of electric vehicles is prohibitive to some people, and I accept that feedback is totally accurate. To address this, we could heavily incentivize electric car ownership for our low earners. Combined with the increased stability and pay from a socialized Uber model, we can empower drivers to raise their standard of living and be a part of the green transition at the same time. Now, now we transition to the real purpose of socializing Uber. Our objective is to accelerate the process of codifying transportation as a new human right. Uber offers unique network and technological advantages that would help to accelerate transportation significantly into a highly advanced public sector. Uh, human rights have consistently evolved, and the central difference between now and then is that we, as a collective, have the intelligence, education, and resources to be active participants in the transition. You know, to, to wrap up the argument, Uber's for-profit structure is failing, and it's continuously diminishing the reality of a, of a market-based solution to solving the problem. Public ownership recognizes the importance of transportation in our society and allows us to focus on advancement of the technology and equity instead of marketing and share price. It's tough for a person to maximize their potential in modern society without reliable transportation. I mean, that, that's just the truth. The only requirement for us is to have a moment of emergent consciousness to recognize that we can evolve to be better for today. And that's why socializing Uber would be the best thing for society, for stakeholders, for shareholders, and the drivers.
Hey everyone, Ron Rivers here. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Thinking Progressive Podcast. If you like this episode, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel below. Every new subscriber really helps us get close to our goal of spreading deeper progressive philosophy and theory among the American population. Your support matters and helps us to create new and original content every week. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next time.